this is the LX570. We borrowed this vehicle today from our friends at Heinz Toyota in Mankato, Minnesota. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys in a ride. ride. And today, Nathan, what are we taking a look at? Oh, today we are looking at the Lexus LX570. That's right. And although it's a little bit, of, a little chilly out here, we're still going to take a review. We've to take a test drive and review but say before you do we do if you'd like to keep up to date with all the new cars trucks and suvs and you want to learn how to use the infotainment systems built into these cars plus you like cool collector car stories take a moment to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell notification up above so you never miss a video that's right so what do you say nate let's, let's go, go for, for a ride, ride. All right, so welcome to our detailed video on the driver's information center and the uh, infotainment center. So uh, starting off over here, you've got your driver's information screen in the middle, and then of course your analog gauges on the either side. So basically, these buttons are the ones that you wanna use. And so if I scroll left to right, that will give me the menu items. So information, here's uh, stuff on, on just on the vehicle, Here's uh, navigation, here's media, um, here is your adaptive cruise control, here's any messages the vehicle's gonna give you, and then uh, any place you can make setting changes um, is right here. So, I'm gonna go back to the first one. It just says information. So, if I now use my up and down scroll buttons, you'll see these little arrows um, going up and down and there's a little bar between so I can go ahead and just click through several pages of information okay and then when it gets to the end it just starts gives you a blank screen and then restarts but uh, there's your like average miles per gallon that kind of stuff all right let's let's move uh, over one more here all right so on this one here it actually tells you what position your wheels are turned which I've I'm not sure I've seen that before. That's <laughs> just really neat. And there's more. Okay, if I go down here, I get tire pressure. Okay, so those are you know would be like warnings. And it does your spare tire too, which is cool. Again, an unusual thing. All right, oil maintenance, and then it goes back to your steering wheel position. Okay, one more over to the right is of course your navigation. And if I had a route plotted in, that would show up turn by turn in here as well. All right, so next one over is media. And in order to get that one to function, you do need to press the center little dot between the arrows, but then you can scroll through all your sources right here. And there's quite a few. All right, let's go back here a minute. And we'll go one more over. There's your adaptive cruise control. This is the gap setting button on the wheel. So if your cruise control is on, you know, let, let, let that get out of the way there. Now I can set my gap setting with this button. Okay, and we'll go back over here. That is the only thing in this particular screen. So if I go one more to the right, okay, uh, any warning messages, low fuel, low tire pressure, that'll all show up right here. And then I go one more, and this is where you can uh, do some changes if you want. Lane departure assist, if I click on that, then you've got, you know, what, what do you want as your alert? How, how sensitive do you want it? Do you want sway warning on? Um, all this kind of stuff. And then you would just push that button to change it, that little dot button between the arrows. Okay? Same thing with blind spot uh, warning system. Uh, so this is on the blind spot monitoring. Again, you can have on or off. Um, just as an example, we go up here, we click this, it goes to off. And now we have it back on again. All right, this is your back button. HUD display, this does have a very nice uh, full color HUD display. And so if I go in here, I can affect the position and brightness of it, okay? Just by, you. here it says down, up arrows is position. And then uh, the, um, 
the actual on off for the whole system is on the left and I showed you that on the general review um, and then if you go up and down this position and then left and right is the brightness if I go back one I can say I either want navigation on or off on my HUD display driving assists you know tells me what kind of assist I have running on the car um, that can be on or off compass on or off and then audio you know, whatever you have on your infotainment that's playing okay so it's really nice you have a lot of stuff that you can customize there all right then if I go down one more I've got scheduled maintenance make that scheduled maintenance I can't say that all right so I, I'm not gonna reset the data of course uh, and then uh, oil maintenance and then meter settings and then again you would just click on the dot and then you can get in there now you can change uh, some of those settings in there so a lot of information right in that screen okay now um, we'll go back here that's pretty much the last one on on this driver's information center okay um, over uh, over here you do have your volume controls up and down for your media and then you can look at scrolling like the, what's the next radio station that kind of stuff go backwards forwards you can hit the different modes to select you know what do you, what do you, you know what do you want for your media um, do you want um, the uh, 3.5 millimeter jack input or do you want Pandora or whatever hey okay? and then phone on phone off you know what there's one more thing I want to show you here while we're looking at the dashboard you see where it says N and then has arrows up and down this is the graphic that's going to show where your truck is there's sort of three levels you can raise it to or lower it to and I'll show you real quickly where that button is once we're done but what's gonna happen is I am going to push this button right here I'm just gonna push it up and then what's gonna happen is it's gonna start to blink on the dashboard now it indicates that I'm going upwards with an up arrow and it says hi so I only have to push it once I don't have to hold it and it is raising the vehicle kind of does sort of one end first and then the other uh, but it will stop flashing when it's raised can you drive while the vehicle is doing this absolutely so now I'm up all the way and it tells me that so that's what that little graphic down there is for okay well let's move over to the infotainment screen controlling all of this this is not a touch screen uh, down here you have a really nice interface basically this big knob here is your mouse and it's not a trackpad it's a physically moving mouse and what I find most interesting about it is it's it's like a gated shifter so when there are icons or things for it to um, to go by it actually physically gives you a click and you can feel the click in your hands so you know when you're going by something right when you're in a screen like navigation it'll rotate freely when there's not anything in the way you know if you just if I go to map and I'm just going around it's not clicking on me at all the mouse is just flowing fluidly but if I go over here now it's giving me a hard click and I can just feel that so that's a nice feature okay so what does this all have on it let's get back to menu for a minute um, over here you've got your destinations for your navigation over here you've got uh, radio so if I just click on that for a minute and that's just a push down on that mouse button okay uh, it's going to it wants to go through my phone here I don't want to go to my phone so I am you see where source is highlighted so I'm just gonna click on source for a minute and I'm gonna change it to uh, let's say FM okay and I also have a uh, satellite on here if I want all right so that's gonna be my source now all right, so now you can see all your radio stations displayed and you can just use your mouse to scroll up through them if you want to go to the next page you do you do need to click over and go to the arrow and press down or up okay that's all that so I'm gonna use my back button here okay I can also go to media and if I go to media and press OK um, I can still press on this source button up here and kind of get the same thing I had well exact same thing I had in the radio where I can pick my source this is all stuff from uh, from my phone Okay, so let's go backwards a minute so it's kind of two places you can access all that information all right 
here's your phone stuff. Um, I, since I currently do not have my phone connected, there would not be um, anything to display there. But if you had your phone connected, that's where it would go. Now, Lexus has a, an app suite, and there are some mobile apps you can download. One of them will allow you to uh, monitor your car, like, you know, start, stop, or um, remote start, stop, unlock, lock doors, that kind of stuff. Um, there's even one where you can set a setting where if someone borrows your car, you can you can set certain, like, I don't want you to go over 65, or I don't want you to do this. And it will alert you if anything happens. That's not supposed to, okay? Um, so, and then you also just have all these apps in here. Let me go down here and get to more. There we go. Okay, so you got lots of different options in here. Okay, we'll go back. Okay, uh, under info, we click on here. You've got fuel consumption, traffic incidents, weather, um, Lexus Insider, and vehicle alert history if there's a recall or something. All right. Um, back again, if I go to climate, even though you have physical controls for your climate control, you can get a nice graphic display and then use your mouse to connect and change things here. Back again. Uh, this last one here is set up, so you can go through uh, different settings, general things, voice, Bluetooth, audio traffic. Um, you've got navigation, vehicle, phone, data services, all sorts of things that you can um, change the settings on. So, uh, for instance, here we have Lexus Park Assist. So if I click on that, it'll tell you, you know, here's your alert volume and it's set to three, but I can have it to one or five. The display, I can turn the display off if I want, or I can turn, let's see here. Okay. That little light comes on if the display is off. We obviously want the display on, so we're gonna leave it. And then you can actually come down here and you can adjust your distance. You have, and you have two, whoops. Gonna move your mouse, whoops. Oh, let me stay there. Okay, you just click. Mouse is not wanting to stay there. There we go. Front and, and then, so close and a little further away for your warnings. Okay. And let's see, let's do uh, drive mode customization. If I click on here, I can set powertrain, chassis, and climate. So if I click on powertrain, I could say, oh, I want power. And then I'll say for chassis, I want comfort. And then for climate, um, uh, I'll go economically. Don't laugh, Rob. I'm going economically on something. All right, so you can have all sorts of customizations there. All right, I'm gonna use the back button here. And uh, so that's the end of that particular menu. I do like that it's a split screen. So you always see kind of what's in your, uh, on your infotainment screen as far as like what's, what's playing. And if I move my mouse all the way over, not only can I switch between the different sources here, and if my phone were connected or there were a disk in, those things would light up or a USB. But I can also go over here and I can quickly, you know, with shortcuts here, select uh, some of the other functions like climate control and that kind of stuff. All right, let's go back to menu for a minute. All right, so let me just quickly show you the navigation here. If I click on map, you see that split screen stays which is really nice. Now, the other feature you do have is right up next to the dashboard, there is a camera button. So if you want to see with your 360 cameras and your, but your car isn't in reverse or something, if you click it, the infotainment screen can switch to showing you the camera right away. So you've got different views. Okay, so if I got my mouse here now, okay, I can click. And I'm changing between, right now I've got the front view on. And if I did the rear view, I would get some additional guidelines there. Okay, I can take it off of, I can leave it on auto or turn it off of auto. Okay, and then if I hit it again, that same button up by the steering wheel, 
Then I get a side-by-side -side view and I get guidelines, which is really nice. And if I turn it again, it goes back to navigation. So in other words, you can have those cameras functioning um, at times other than in reverse. Okay, let's move on down here. Um, it, is a, it is, by the way, a 19-speaker Mark Levinson sound system, which is just crazy. It's awesome. All right, moving down here, you've got physical controls for your media center here, as well as your hazard buttons. So then down here, you just have all of your buttons for setting your climate control system, as well as your fan speed, right? Okay, so let's talk about the four-wheel drive control systems down here, because this does have uh, uh, quite a complete set of controls. So to use the the, the uh, crawl mode here for ascending or descending the hill, um, first of all, you need to put it in four low. To do that, you need to first go to neutral. You need to push this down and then backwards, okay? Now it's gonna light up to four low, okay? Next, I have to put it in drive or reverse, and then I can turn on crawl mode. Crawl mode is activated, the dashboard says. And I've got a little speed setting here. You can see the dots going back and forth. I can set my speed as to how fast I wanna go while I'm crawling, so I don't have to worry about the accelerator. I just worry about steering. And the way I'm changing that speed is right down here with that okay now while i'm in crawl mode if i need to make a turn it's it's difficult because it wants to bind and so you can use this button right here which allows you it's called a turn assist and it allows you to, to much easier turn the wheel without binding everything okay now i turn that off Okay, and I deactivate crawl, but I've still left it in four low. Now this same button that was my speed controller now becomes a terrain selector. So up on the dashboard, you'll see that currently it says multi-terrain select rock and dirt. If I spin it, I get rock. If I go backwards again here, I get moguls and then loose rock and then mud and sand. So those are your choices. So just in four low, you get the mode selector. And if you turn on crawl mode, then you get the speed selector out of this. So it, it does two different things. All right, so we're gonna get out of this now. All right. And then once you're out of, once you take it out of four low, crawl automatically disengages. Okay, let's step into the back and take a look at the technology there. Okay, so in the back there's a lot of uh, technology. And uh, to start off with, let's just talk about these two big screens that are sticking out. So they are adjustable, okay, height, or, uh, as far as tilting goes, so you can get a good angle. But the controller is in the armrest. And if I go down here, and I can just pull it out. Okay, so it has a left and right selector, depending on which TV you want to control, or right now it's set in the middle, which means I can control both TVs. So there's my power button, works very much like your remotes at home. So if I hit that, you're gonna see everything come up on the screen. Now, there's nothing connected to play, so we won't see any actual movie or anything play, however, if I hit the input, I can change it. You see the different things that are changing. So where are all these little sources? Right down here would be all those, are a lot of those sources. You've got an HDMI plug in here and you've got a, um, it's, it's like a um, eighth inch jack connector, but it would be the kind that would have three rings on it, would come off of say like a PlayStation like an RCA to an eighth inch, but it would have three rings and that would plug in here and do your audio and media from that. So you could play games through the consoles. You got volume controls and you got your plugins for your headphones. So that's all right there, okay? If you want to play a, um, a DVD or something that can be done from the front, you can also control the rear infotainment from the front as well. Okay. And then the rest of it is just all controlled through this remote. So very, very nice and, and very nice screens. They're about 11.3 inches each.
and it has a nice little secure spot to sit there and then your earphones could lay right in there all right now in addition to that you do have your whole climate control system here so you've got heated and ventilated seats on both sides and i love the fact that it's auto all right so both sides have temperature control so if i just push and hold and it's it's a nice soft button it's not a hard plasticky button it's a rubber button fan speed right here and of course your mode and then of course you could turn the fan off completely and then they have an auto function so that each side can maintain its own temperature. And I'll do the same in the front. So I specifically like the fact that it's included in the armrest because I just like having those controls right at your fingertip. Now you may be thinking, well, where is the cup holders? Well, if I push down in here, they pop right out of the center. So you still have your cup holders right down here. And that's it for the technology in the back seat, but I'll tell you, it is comfortable and it's loaded. You'd have a very nice trip in this car.